Hello, good morning. How's everyone doing? Uh, just wanted to talk to you guys about a little therapy that I do here at the Biomed RX Health Center that is helpful and applicable to most people. Uh, most of us, um, well, I wouldn't say most because I don't know. I'm not a statistician, but uh, many of us procrastinate. What is procrastination, right? It's the disconnect between what you know uh, you should be doing and uh, ADHD, right? ADD, uh, attention deficit disorder, your inability to focus on that which you are supposed to be doing and long enough for you to accomplish it or the inability to motivate yourself to do those things that you know you should be doing, right? So I'm gonna give you a little, um, tip, a little understanding of what we do here uh, with uh, brain training and neural feedback that can specifically address the issues dealing with procrastination for those of you who tend to procrastinate. Now, I'm going to use my friend here, uh, the space alien. No, this is Kai's hat. Um, shout out to Kai. My man Kai is uh, enjoying... Uh, summer camp, I mean, winter camp right now. First time away from mommy and daddy. So it's a little bittersweet. But um, here is the map of the head. Now, these are points that um, you would find. Um, any neurologist would be familiar with this. Uh, any neurotherapist would be familiar with this. Um, any sleep center would be familiar. It's the same map everywhere you go, okay? Now, when we're training the brain, okay, uh, we can focus on different areas of the neocortex to affect different um, aspects of thinking and behavior, okay? So if we are training in the frontal lobe, F1 and F2, or what they call FP1 and FP2, that has to do with um, enhancing uh, executive control, inhibitory control, thinking and planning, okay? But uh, if we're dealing with the parietal lobe, P3 and P4, these spots right here, we're dealing with uh, tension, physical tension and emotional tension. And as we slide down the parietal lobe into the occipital lobe, O1 and O2, in the back of the brain, um, we're affecting more emotional and less physical, right? But there are a number of, and of course, uh, the frontal lobes are good for training what we call common sense, right? But there are a number of little tricks that we can do to affect different things. If you happen to procrastinate, right? Well, let's talk about the uh, the Broca's region, which is right here. Uh, that has to do with the initiation of speech. Uh, this region right here has to do with planning of speech. Um, right here below T6 is a good place for training away the conditions of Asperger's, those on the autism spectrum. Um, RTPJ, which is the right junction between the uh, temporal lobe and the parietal lobe. So it's right here between these two points. RTPJ has to do with empathy and compassion, okay? Um, but if you happen to be a procrastinator, if you happen to procrastinate, this is the sweet spot right here, okay? Right, F3 and F4, not F1 and F2, F3 and F4 are dealing more with procrastination. Now, um, training in F3 and F4, especially in the higher frequencies, such as uh, gamma, 40 hertz, 30 hertz and above, uh, is really good for, for um, helping you stop procrastinate, right? To stop to end procrastination. And that's the training that I'm going to be doing on myself today. Um, actually, I've been going... Uh, I've been training the frontal lobe and then going back and forth from F1 and F2 to F3 and F4. But now what I'm going to do, because this is the neocortex and it's not an exact science, right? 
is on a daily basis, this is ground right here, on a daily basis, I am training the frontal lobe and then slowly sliding back a little bit from F1 until I get to F3 and then from F2 until I get to F4, right? So I'm not going to go exactly to F3, F4, but I am going to go high on my forehead, kind of like halfway there, okay? Just to give you an idea. So now if you live here in Southern California and you would like to do a little bit of consciousness hacking or brain hacking or neuro hacking or biohacking, however you'd like to call it, um, contact me because I can help to supercharge your brain. I can help to fine tune your brain so that you are no longer a procrastinator. Now, where am I going to reference? I'm going to reference right back here at the occipital lobe. I like training my occipital lobe and I also like training my cerebellum. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you would like to um, train your brain to make it easier for you to train your body, if you're an athlete, right, uh, then we would train across the motor cortex right here, okay, in the somatosensory band, which is right here in front. And um, that controls not only feeling, but also movement, your ability to control the movement of your body in different areas. So that's pretty much it. Um, we start off with a little bit of alcohol to clean the locations, right? And then we put a little bit of our new prep gel. This is a, it's got like a little bit of exfoliation quality to it. It's a little bit abrasive. It's got a little abrasiveness to it, but it is an electrolyte gel. Okay, this is something that's very important to understand for those of you who are in healthcare. The difference between electrolyte and dielectric. Uh, electrolyte gel is conductive of electricity. It conducts electricity. Dielectric gel is just the opposite. It's made to not conduct electricity. So they look very similar. They usually have this green type of appearance, all right? like a green gel, okay? And they are both found in the hospital. But it's very important to understand the difference between electrolyte, electrolytic properties and dielectric properties because they have the exact opposite purpose. This is electrolyte gel, which is made to conduct electricity. So we are trying to enhance the conduction of the probes silver probes that I'm going to be putting on my scalp to read my brain waves. These probes and the amplifier obviously are very, very delicate, very sensitive instruments in order to read brain waves. So we need to have the best conductivity that we can get, electrical conductivity uh, for the brain in electrolyte gel. Same thing for a defibrillator. Back in the days before everybody was using automated external defibrillators, AEDs, we use the old fashioned defibs with paddles. And I do believe that uh, most people should stick with regular defibs with paddles anyway. And uh, even on the AEDs, the paddles on the AEDs, they use some form of an electrolyte gel or an electrolyte paste. And I'm going to put my electrolyte paste on in a minute. Now, dielectric gel. Dielectric gel looks very similar. Most of the time it's got this greenish kind of color. It's a green gel. It's for use with ultrasound, like when a lady has an ultrasound probe, if she's pregnant, or a person has a heart condition and we're trying to look at his heart through ultrasound, or um, there are a lot of reasons for us to use ultrasound. And the ultrasound machine has to be, we're not uh, delivering any energy to the patient, no electricity, of course. So that's called being electrically isolated, right? The symbol for that is either a heart with a box around it or the symbol of a man or person with a box around it. That means that the device is intended to not transfer any electricity to the client, to the patient, and that it's electrically isolated. So 
the gel that you would put on an ultrasound probe is dielectric gel, not electrolyte gel. It's dielectric gel. It may look the same, but it has the exact opposite purpose. It is there to stop electricity from flowing. So it's obviously pretty dangerous if you use uh, dielectric gel where you're supposed to be using electrolyte gel or if you use electrolyte gel where you're supposed to be using dielectric gel. It's very important to understand the distinction and not to confuse them, not to have any dielectric gel anywhere near the crash cart so that no one uses it mistakenly on defibrillator pads because now you're putting a gel on the defibrillator pad that's actually stopping electricity from crossing through. And electricity from the defibrillator is going to pass through the gel, is going to burn the gel, and is going to burn the skin of the patient. And yes, in this litigious society in which we live, you can save someone's life with a defibrillator and then they'll turn around and sue you because you put burns on their chest with the defibrillator with which you saved their life. And that's just the world that we live in today. So it's important to um, understand the distinction between electrolyte and dielectric properties. So you can see where I'm putting the probes today. Now this is not on F3 and F4. Okay, but it's neither on F1 and F2. F1, F2, F3, F4. So I'm putting it right in between F1 and F3. Uh, that has to do with planning, imagination, and yes, a little bit of procrastination. Okay, so if you want to stop procrastinating, and we can all become more effective at what we do, right? Uh, we can we can all use a little bit of procrastination reduction. Give me a call. Contact me. And uh, if I were in your town, I would uh, I would be able to to perform this therapy to you uh, locally. But I can't. We're located in Southern California, forty five minutes east of Los Angeles, in the city of Upland, at the southeast corner of Mountain Avenue and Foothill Boulevard. So. I'm going to go and do my neural feedback training now. I just wanted to show you guys exactly where I was training. Uh, remember, procrastination, right? F3, F4, right? Uh, executive control and inhibitory control, planning, uh, basically thinking as we understand it. F1 and F2, the frontal lobe is very important. Um, and uh, so I'm kind of sliding back from F1 and F2 over into F3 and F4 to stop uh, procrastinating, to stop the procrastination. And of course, I just finished training with the Mind Alive David, as I do every morning. Uh, and the Mind Alive David is a cranial electrotherapy stimulation device, uh, a brain training device. It goes hand in hand with neural feedback. In fact, it makes neural feedback a lot more effective. So I'm going to get out of here because I've been doing a lot of work and I put off my neural feedback until 1040 this morning, but I do have to get it done. I will get it done. And uh, I want to thank everyone for joining and I hope everyone has a wonderful day and take care of your health, be loving and kind. And uh, I will make another video later. Actually, I'm going to be shooting YouTube videos today. So I'd like you guys to look for me on YouTube. Uh, both the Biomed RX TV channel on YouTube as well as the Devin Lockett channel. Oh, and and while I while I have you guys here, uh, we are putting together our uh, cast and crew for this spring and summer's health, fitness, and yoga videos. So if you would like to participate, please go to my home page and follow the link to the backstage uh, posting and. Uh, you know, and submit. And I look forward to uh, working with you guys this spring, this summer. Take care.